It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is in person. The king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? Now, we'd like to tell you about the fish that told a story. It's almost 10 o'clock on a lovely fall evening in Mineral City. The last of the regular customers is departing from the Eureka Cafe, leaving Roy Rogers, Pat Brady, and the proprietress, Dale Evans. Well, good night, folks. Good night, night, Sheriff. Sheriff. I hope you catch those fellas, Sheriff. I do, too. Well, how do you like that? Smuggled pearls from Mexico being shipped east from right here in Mineral City. And a pretty slick way of doing it, too. Shipping them out in potted cactus plants. Well, the Sheriff says he's given orders to the post office to hold anyone that tries to ship any more cactus. And I hope he'll catch up with whoever's doing it. Well, we'll see. The sheriff's persistent, if nothing else. Well, let's close up, Dale. Me and Nella Bell want to take a little spin in the moonlight. Oh, it's early yet, Pat. Dale, you never stay open this late, and especially on a night like this. Well, a few more customers might come along. Besides, I have my new icebox to pay for. Icebox? That's an ice factory. Yeah, walk-in icebox is really something for a place the size of the Eureka Cafe. Well, I got a very good deal on it, and I'm sure it'll be a wonderful thing in the long run. Yeah, I'll bet. You got a big city icebox, only Mineral City isn't a very big city. It's growing all the time. Uh, speaking of a big city, I made quite a deal today with a couple of real city fellers. Uh, rented the long hole so they could do some fishing for a few days. Long hole? Well, that's where you got them old feeding trays you used when you were raising some trout. In yeah, uh-huh. You rented it? Why, Roy, you've always let anyone fish there who wanted to. Sure, but these fellows insisted on three or four days of strictly private fishing, and since they offered me the money, I took it. Well, why don't you just give it to Dale to apply on the icebox, and maybe we can close up and get out of here? <laughs> oh, no, no, I'll turn it over to the Fish and Game Commission. They'll use it to hatch and plant more trout. That's the way they keep the fishing good for everybody. Wow! Will you look at that big black limousine? Why, you could get Nellie Bell in that back seat twice. Why, those are my city friends. I told you we'd get some more customers if we just stayed open. Well, hello there, Rogers. Hi. I guess you cowpunchers hang around the local restaurant just like the young blades in the city hang around the corner drugstore. Well, you're the same guy we rented the trout stream from. <laughs> it's a small world. Yeah, this is a small town. The menu's right up there on the wall on the blackboard, folks. We're looking for the proprietor. How do you do? I'm the proprietor. Oh, Miss Evans, this is Mr. Bradbury and his friend. That's right, B.B. Bradbury. Well, how do you do, Mr. Bradbury? Well, how do you do? <laughs> I'm beginning to enjoy my vacation already. <laughs> Me too. Quiet, Hugo. Uh, Miss Evans, we were told that this is one of the few places in town that has reasonable quantities of ice. Reasonable quantities? We got tons of it. We certainly do, Mr. Bradbury. I just installed a new walk-in ice box. That's fine, that's fine. Hugo and I are here to do some fishing, you see. In fact, uh, we've rented a stream on Roger's place. Yes, I've told him about it. Oh, I see. Well, we want to airmail our catches back east every morning. Of course, uh, they'll have to be packed in quantities of ice. You bet. they got to get there fresh. Well, I can certainly take care of that, Mr. Bradbury. I'll pack the fish for you if you like and get them all ready to ship. Oh, that'll be fine, just fine. Yeah, sounds like more work for me. Oh, I forgot to ask you, Mr. Bradbury. Do you have your fishing license? Oh, certainly, Roger, certainly. We know all the ins and outs of trout fishing. Sure. And it's all nice and legal, ain't it, B.B.? Hugo. 
Let me do the talking. Do you need any tackle? I stock a few lines and leaders, and I tie trout flies for the folks around here occasionally, too. Uh, we don't need no flies for the kind of fishing we do. Just our special brand of salmon eggs here in the satchel. Huh, Hugo! Oh. Will you ever learn to keep that mouth closed? What do I do, baby? What are you slapping me for? Never mind. I'm here for a rest, and you make me nervous. So, Miss Evans, we'll be in in the morning with a limit catch. Hugo annoys me, but he's an expert fisherman. Come along, Hugo. What I say, Lord? It's all nice to leak. Well, it looks like I rented the long hole to a man with quite a temper. But I guess this sort of vindicates my judgment on the icebox, doesn't it? Hey, look. The big fellow's putting his black satchel in the trunk of the car. But I don't see no rods or reels in there. I wonder what sort of special salmon eggs they're using for bait. I'd rather fish trout on a dry fly any day. You know, I'm beginning to wonder about a lot of things. Yeah, the whole darn deal looks kind of fishy to me. Well, my last customer last night is my first customer this morning. Good morning, Dale. And, Pat, well, you don't go on duty until this evening. Yeah, I know it, but me and Roy thought we'd be here when those fellows come in with their fish, if any. They certainly were confident that they could catch the limit. I wonder if Bradbury's still slapping the big fellow around. Hey, we didn't get here any too early. Here they come. And look, they've got fish. I'll be doggone. Oh, good morning, Miss Evans. Fishing was Hello. excellent this morning. Good morning, Rogers. Still <laughs> hanging around the restaurant, huh, cowboy? You bet. Say, that's quite a catch. Yes, sir. Ten trout apiece, 20 in all. That's the daily limit, I understand. That's right. Say, it's awful early in the morning for that. Why, well, I fished long hole for a whole day without catching my limit. Yes, you sure must have a quicker method than fishing dry flies. Rogers, I paid you for the use of your fishing hole and for privacy. I think our privacy should extend to the method we use to catch the fish. Well, no offense, Mr. Bradbury. Oh, that's all right, Rogers. We really have no secrets. Perhaps it's the special salmon eggs we use. Gee, trout must really go for salmon eggs. Sure, and it's all nice and legal, too. <clears throat> well, Miss Evans, you're certainly efficient. You have the ice in the packing boxes out already. Why, certainly. The quicker you ice the fish, the fresher they'll stay. Say, Pat, why don't you put on an apron and help me clean them? Oh, uh, uh, don't bother to clean them, Miss Evans. They'll ship better as they are, as long as they're kept perfectly cold. Oh, just as you say, Mr. Bradbury. I'll keep an eye on her while she packs them, B.B., just in case she decides to keep one out for herself. Now, wait a minute. Dale wouldn't do that. Well, of course I wouldn't. I don't know. You got a restaurant. You might decide to put trout on the menu. Listen, fella, I think you'd better apologize. Well... Think you could make me? I certainly could. Hugo's a pretty big fellow, Mr. Rogers. You don't know Roy Rogers. Oh, let's skip it. Hugo didn't mean anything. Sure I did. I wouldn't put steel in a fish past any woman. All right, Hugo. If you're going to get your fists up, get them up fast because I've warned you. Come ahead. Oh, Roy, not in here. There. We'll have him apologize when he wakes up, Bradbury. <laughs> See, Dale? You didn't have to worry about things getting broken. You should have known that Roy would drop him in his tracks with one punch. Miss Evans, I'm terribly sorry. I want to apologize for Hugo. Rogers, I must say you had that coming. Hugo sometimes has to be taught a lesson. Well, let's forget the whole thing. Here are your fish, Mr. Bradbury. All iced and packed and wrapped. That will be one dollar and a half. Oh, fine, fine. Well, here you are. You've done a splendid job. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Uh, what happened? You talk too much again, Hugo. Now, come on along. We'll get these fish out by air and get back to the camp. All right, but that rod... Never mind. You got what was coming to you. Now, come along. I'm awfully sorry for the trouble, Roy. And thank you. It's all right, Dale. I'm pretty sure you won't do that again. And, Pat, when Bradbury and Hugo do their fishing tomorrow morning, you and I are going to be watching them from the rocks above Longhole. Boy, I'm all for that, Roy. I am, too. I'll go with you. No, Dale. I'd rather you weren't around where there's liable to be some shooting. Shooting? What do you mean by that? Well, when I shoved Hugo to straighten him up for the punch, I felt a gun holster under his coat. It was one of those shoulder holsters that big city gangsters use. Here they are, Roy's three little friends, Handy, Dandy, and Candy. The three honey bears you see right on the front of every Sugar Crisp package. Hi, fellas. What's new? 
What's new? Why, Poe's Sugar Crisp. Right. Sugar Crisp is new and so delicious. Different from any cereal you ever ate before. It's the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Yes, and our three little Sugar Crisp bears can tell you three good reasons why it's such a honey of a new cereal. We sure can. As a cereal, it's dandy. And for snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy, right out of the box. (laughs) Yes, and you know why Sugar Crisp is so doggone good? It's nourishing puffed wheat with a candy-like coating of sugar and honey. And since Sugar Crisp is already sweet, you don't need sugar. Just pour on milk or cream and have a real feast for breakfast. And remember, Sugar Crisp is ideal for snacks any time of day. So quick and easy to fix. Or you can eat it right out of the package like candy. It's good. And what's more, it gives you quick food energy, too. So take the word of the three little Sugar Crisp bears when they tell you... As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Look for the genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. Take home Sugar Crisp tomorrow. Two strangers rent the fishing hole at the far corner of the Double R Bar Ranch property. They insist on complete privacy and that the fish they catch so mysteriously be iced and shipped east immediately. And although the men insist that their fishing operation is perfectly legal, Roy and Pat feel that it bears watching. Gosh, Roy, I don't blame you for leaving Trigger down there by the creek. This is rough country even for Nellie Bell. We had to come up to Longhole on the blind side, Pat, and I left Trigger there in case we have to separate when we leave. We can park Nellie Bell behind this big boulder. Okay. Whoa, Nellie Bell. This is this is kind of a dull trip for you, girl. Oh, I don't think she minds, Pat. We'll have to climb up over those rocks to the top of the cliff. Good idea, Roy. Longhole will be 40 feet below us, and we can watch Bradbury and that big lug to our heart's content. Well, they won't see us if we're quiet up there. You mean we can't talk? No, well, we can't shout. I still don't know what to make of those two fellows. Do you, Roy? Well, there could be a connection between them and the pearl smuggling the sheriff told us about. Well, I don't see what the connection would be. Pearls come out of oysters, not fish. Anyway, they're armed, and I think they're dangerous. Quiet now. We'll peek over the edge. Hmm. They're down there all right. I don't see any fishing poles. No, neither do I. Roy, Roy, do you see what those fellas have done? They've dammed up both ends of long hole. Sure enough, they have. Well, why don't we just go down there and kick them off the property? The fish will slowly starve to death if they can't feed up and down the whole stream. I don't think they'll starve, Pat. Look, Bradbury and Hugo are feeding them. Well, I'll be darned. Hey, they're throwing something in. And they're being mighty careful to throw it right into the feeding trays you left there. Whatever their bait is, the fish like it. Well, look at that. Well, would you look at that? You can see the trout swim right into the tray and eat the things. Hey, those fellas are chumming. That's what they're doing. They're baiting those trays to bring the fish to the surface. Pat, not so loud. But they're chumming. It may be legal, but it sure ain't Spartan chumming with salmon eggs. Pat, I'll bet those are those very special salmon eggs Bradbury cracked about. Hey, if they fill these trout up like that, it'll spoil the fishing for weeks. Pat, lie low. Someone's coming. Do you think Bradbury and you have... Oh, it's Dale. Good morning. Dale, shh. Well, I was just trying to say good morning. Dale, we told you not to come up here. Yeah, and why the fishing pole? Well, is there any law against a girl going fishing? No, but... I just happened to feel like catching a couple of trout. I just happened to be passing by here. And you didn't want to miss anything, did you? No, I didn't. All right, you go back to Mineral City. Dale, these thugs mean trouble. We've been watching them from up here and... Hey, Roy, Roy, now look at them. Yep, they're using a net to get the trout out of the hole. They sure are. They're saying and that's what they're doing, and that is against the law. What's going on here, anyway? They're a fine couple of trout fishermen. They dam up the hole, then they chum with salmon eggs, and now they're seining. I figured they'd use a net after the trout eat up all the special salmon eggs. I'm glad you showed up, Dale. But you just told me to go back to town. We've got to get a hold of one of those fish. Can I borrow your rod? I'll have to work fast. They've seined up five or six down there already. The rod's all set. But do you mean to tell me you can drop a fly way down there? Hey, this is cramped quarters and a mighty long cast. Well, I'm going to try. I'll have to whip out a lot of line. If I do it just right, I'll lay the fly down practically on the trout's nose. Here goes. There. Beautiful. 
for Roy. Hey, a big one's coming up to the lower. He hit it. I've got him. Haul him up quick. I've got a plane first. Hey, Hugo. Somebody's fishing from the rocks above us. Where? I can't see nobody. Well, you can see the line, can't you? I'll try to get him up now. We've got to get that trout and run for it. Hey, you up there. There's a private fishing hole. They got one of our fish and they're pulling it up. Reach out, Hugo. Grab that fish off the line. I can't reach out that far. Well, wave in. Go on, hurry. Oh, can't you reel in faster, Roy? Well, I don't want to lose the fish. You can't fish here. It's illegal. Well, look who's talking. Grab that fish, Hugo. I can't. He's dangling and flopping. Ah! <laughs> Hey, the big lug fell in. Serves him right. I've got him about halfway up. Later, Hugo. I'll stop him from pulling that fish up. What are they doing now? I don't know, but I've got to keep my mind on this fish. Hey, he's using a machine gun. Hey, you, Bradbury, don't you know that shooting a fish is against the law? Pat, get back. You're a perfect target. Bradbury is Rogers and Brady in the girl. Pat, get back. I've got him. I've got the fish. And we're on our way. Come on, run for Nelly Bell. Hurry up, Pat. Hey, I took one last look, Roy, and they're heading for that big car there. All right, you're really going to have to drive Nelly Bell. <laughs> I'll drive, but I don't know how she can outrun 16 soldiers. We've got to get back to the road some way, and they can cut us off. Start this thing and drive like crazy, Pat. I'll tell you where to go. That car of theirs can go twice as fast as this thing, and they got a machine gun. Don't call Nellie Bell a thing. If anyone can get us out of here, she can. Hang on, it's Buffy. Pat, Pat, they're gaining on us. Well, Nellie Bell's wide open. Come on, girl. To the right, Pat, around that rock. I got you. Good work, Pat. Go straight ahead now. Well, shouldn't we cut for the road? Not yet. Straight ahead if you can dodge those trees. I can dodge them all right. There they come. That big car so fast. Oh, they're close enough to use that darn Tommy well, gun. Stick with it, Pat. But, Roy, we're headed for the creek. Oh, Bradbury's got the range. He knocked the windshield out. Now, Pat, turn here fast and drive right down the creek. You mean, uh, all right. By golly, we're game. Hang on, everybody. We've gained a couple of seconds on them, but when they straighten out again... If they're going to follow us, they'll have to drive through the creek, too. And I don't think their car will make it. But, Roy, they're doing it. They're turning into the creek like we did, and it's such a big, powerful car. But it's car. mighty low slung, Dale. Keep going, Pat. Roy, you're right. Their car stopped. Hot dog, they hit the water and stalled, eh? You bet they did. Look, there's Trigger. We left him here on purpose, Dale. Pat, let me out. Then cut up to the road and find the sheriff. I got you. Trigger and I are heading for the Eureka with this fish. <laughs> For heaven's sakes, Dale, I can't just go out and arrest those two fillers. Well, Roy wanted you to come right down here. All right, all right. Where is Roy? He's in the kitchen cleaning a fish. Cleaning a fish? What's wrong with Roy? First he asked me to arrest a couple of fellas for pearl smuggling without any evidence, and you then you tell... You don't have to worry about that now, Sheriff. Here's the evidence. Huh? I just caught a fish, a mighty interesting fish. Look, here's one of the salmon eggs Bradbury had just fed him. What's that evidence of? It's a plain, ordinary salmon egg. Okay, watch. I want to drop it on the floor. Well, my gosh, it bounces. Roy, that's no salmon egg. Well, not a plain, ordinary one. Look here. I'll scrape this red stuff away with my knife. Well, say, it looks like a kind of gelatin. It is. It's made of salmon eggs and strengthened so it'll stick. But it cuts away easily. Now, look. A pearl. A perfect pearl. You bet. Bradbury and Hugo thought up a real smuggling trick that time. You mean they coated those pearls with that stuff, fed them to the fish, then caught the fish and shipped them east? That's exactly what they did. Oh, it's a beautiful pearl. Hey, let me hold it for a second, Dale. Golly, that is a nice one. Well, what are we standing around for, Roy? Let's go round up those fellas. We've got the evidence. And Bradbury knows we have it. We don't know exactly where they are now. But if we wait here, I'll bet they'll be around. We're around before you're ready for us, Rogers. Don't move, anyone. This machine gun can knock you down like ten pins. Back to Roy in just a minute. But right now, let's hear from Handy, Dandy, and Candy, the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears, and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Yes, those three Sugar Crisp bears are so right. Post Sugar Crisp is a honey of a new cereal. It's already sweetened, so you don't need sugar. Just add milk or cream. 
And mother, Sugar Crisp is ideal for snacks when the youngsters are hungry between meals. Made of nourishing puffed wheat, coated with energy-rich honey and sugar. Or they can eat it just like candy right out of the box. Be sure to ask for genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it. Roy Rogers presents the sheriff with evidence of the highly ingenious pearl smuggling racket of B.B. Bradbury and his henchmen. But before they can lay plans for the capture, Bradbury bursts in on our friends, his finger itching against the trigger of a deadly machine gun. Don't move, anyone. This machine gun can mow you down like ten pins. Oh, yeah. okay. BB's got the gun, and it ain't no BB gun. Take their weapons, Hugo. Rogers first. This is a pleasure. I don't need guns to handle you, Hugo. Now the sheriff. <laughs> Small town cop. I've had my eye on you, Skip fellas. Get the conversation. Keep going, Hugo. Unload the pistols from Miss Evans and that jeep-driving maniac. More of a pleasure all the time. Think your friend's quite a fisherman, don't you, lady? Never you mind what I think. Watch it, Hugo. Yeah, Hugo, don't be impolite or I might turn Rogers loose on you again. Oh, Bradbury, I wasn't being impolite. Now, fella, I'll take your guns. I only carry one. All right, B.B. They couldn't shoot their way out of a paper bag with the artillery they got left. Splendid, Hugo, splendid. Now, make sure there's room for four people in that big icebox Miss Evans is so proud of. Sure, sure. I'll just toss the groceries out. Just a minute. That's not necessary. Oh, yes, it is, Miss Evans. I find that pearl smuggling affords me an excellent living, and I'm not going to have it interfered with. What do you think you're going to do, Bradbury? I'm going to put the four of you in cold storage. Now, Rogers, hand over that pearl. It belongs to me, you know. I don't have the pearl. All of us were admiring it, and I guess Pat has it now. Oh, have you? Yeah, it's darn near big enough to make a pearl horn button for Nellie Bell. <laughs> All right, young man, I can handle this machine gun very nicely with one hand. I'll catch the pearl with the other. Toss it over. What do you mean? You heard me. Toss it over and no tricks. Go ahead, Pat. Toss it. Haven't you told me that you were quite a marble player when you were a youngster? Well, the best darn knuckle shot in Twistin' Bronk Falls, but I don't see what that's got to do. Neither do I. Toss me the pearl. Sure, Pat. Flip it to him. Okay. <laughs> Oh, my eye! I'll take that machine gun. There, great work, Pat. Hugo, Hugo! Boy, look out! What's going on in here? Oh, Hugo, oh, Hugo, get the machine gun. Yeah, I'll be loose in a second. Oh, Rogers, no, don't hit me again. I'll... I'll... You'll do nothing, Bradbury. Look out, Roy. You go wrench free. You hit me a lucky punch before, Rogers, but this time I'll... All right, come on. Careful, Roy. He's a brute. I've got the machine gun, Roy. And I've got our own guns. We won't need them now because here it goes. There. Took a little longer than before, but I got him. Roy, you were wonderful. Golly, Roy. Trying to hold that big fellow is like trying to hold a loco steer. Yeah. But neither of them will be so tough with handcuffs, son. We'll pack them off to jail, and they'll be there for a long, long time. Better find that pearl, Pat. We're still going to need it for evidence. It's right here. It sure is a beauty. That knuckle shot you made was a beauty, too. I never quite believed those yarns about how you were a marble champion, but I'm convinced now. Why, anyone in Twistin' Bronk Falls can tell you how good I was... Say, uh, Dale, can I have the rest of the day off? Why, certainly, Pat. Why? Oh, I gotta go get Nellie Bell a new windshield. You know something? We haven't had breakfast yet, and I'm hungry. Well, you couldn't be in a better place if you want to eat. Say, how would you like to follow your cereal with some nice, fresh trout? <laughs> That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellows and girls... Remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An art brush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. And now, Crinkles, Post's new sugar-coated rice cereal, announces the first week's Name the Pony Contest winner. 
Cheryl Ann Rhodes of Williamsburg, Pennsylvania, wins a real Palomino pony picked by Roy Rogers. And Buckaroo's still two more ponies to win, so enter right away. Contest entry blanks at your grocer's. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Joe Kearns, Ed Max, and Herb Butterfield. The script was based on a story by Andy White. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp.